ever since the beginning, I've always said I'm going to retire by the age of 30. It's something that sounds like a super ambitious goal and it's definitely something that raises some eyebrows at first. It might sound like something that's not possible, but I'm just an ambitious person. And when I set a goal for myself, I go for it. And usually I accomplish it. But when I say stuff like this, I'm not just talking out the side of my neck just because it sounds good. Like I actually have a plan for this and I want to share it with you. So as I take you with me on my personal finance journey, as I build and grow my wealth, I wanna make something very clear. There seems to be a lot of confusion when the words retirement and financial freedom get thrown out there. So I'm gonna clear up what my definition is of both of these so you don't confuse them with something else. When I say retire by 30, I don't mean stop working for the rest of my life and do nothing else while money somehow keeps coming in for no apparent reason while I'm sitting on the beach with a drink in my hand as I listen to the waves splash in the near distance. Now that sounds good, but knowing me, I could imagine that getting very boring by like week two. My actual definition of retirement relates to the choice, having the option to be able to say, hey, you know what? I'm good. I don't need to answer to anybody right now. I don't need to work. I have so much money in the bank, so much money coming in right now, so much money working for me that's turning itself into more money. I have so many passive income streams coming in right now that if I wake up tomorrow and I just decide, hey, I'm good. I wanna spend more time with my family. You know what? I wanna to move to a different state again. Cool, I can do that. I don't have to rely on anybody in particular to pay me because I just have money like that. That's the goal. So pretty much what I'm saying is when I talk about retirement, I'm mainly talking about financial independence where I don't have to rely on anybody to pay me because I figured out how to pay myself for one. And two, I figured out how to make my money work for me in such a way that I earn a full-time income from it. And by full-time income, I mean making more money than my living expenses cost while still being able to save and invest at least a thousand dollars a month each. Then after that, of course, the ultimate goal is financial freedom, which is an idea that was introduced to me at the age of 21. And ever since then, I set my sights on the age of 30 to retire. And by financial freedom, I mean money is straight up not an issue. Like, I could stop working on anything. I'm talking jobs, side hustle, having my own business. I could stop all of that. I could literally do nothing at all for two whole years and not miss a beat. And still make more money than I would have doing a traditional job alone. Because my assets are so strong. Because my business is bringing in so much money that I literally have a hard time figuring out what to do with all the extra money because my expenses are so low. So before I continue to fantasize about what my future is gonna look like, I'm gonna lay out exactly what my strategy is to achieve this goal. So the first part of my strategy was to create a safety net of money, which basically meant that I wanted to figure out how to save a lot of money in a short amount of time. And I found the best way to do that was to save my money on autopilot where I would actually automate my accounts to send over money to my savings account every month. And as I made more money throughout that time, I increased the amount of money I was saving. And I go in depth on exactly how I did this in another video, which I'll link up here. So if you're curious on more details, definitely check that out after this video. But the reason this is such an essential part of my strategy is because if you can't figure out how to save money and have some money put away, you will never be prepared for what might happen in the future as far as emergencies or prices going up. But it's okay, I got you. I'm gonna make sure you are prepared. And being prepared starts with having a standard for yourself a standard for how much money you wanna save and a standard for how much spending money you wanna have every month. And something that I was very good at was having a standard locked down for all that stuff. And I got to the point where I could anticipate exactly how much money was coming out of my account at what point of the month, every month. Which is good, but I'm gonna warn you right now, don't make the same mistake I made. I got so dialed in and focused on saving that I got really good at it, but it was all I saw. Like, I didn't see the other pieces of the puzzle that I'm about to give you in this video. And I didn't see what was needed beyond saving money. So that was literally all I focused on until one day I had three separate conversations with a bunch of people who were way wealthier than I was who told me that only focusing on saving money was counterintuitive because you literally can't save your way to wealth. And that's what got me infatuated with the second part of my strategy. And that's increasing my income. This is the part of my strategy that I focus on the most these days because like I said, I've got the saving stuff down. So while I'm saving in the background, I've really been doubling down on increasing my income. So I'll take you on a quick journey of what that looked like. So at the start of my career, what increasing my income looked like to me was working overtime. Even though that is a good way of increasing your income, I really didn't have any control over that. Plus it kind of burnt me out. And sure enough, one day my job cut the overtime and it was cut for like a couple of months and then they brought it back. But my point is you really don't have control if that's your only way of increasing your income. So that was when I started to take matters into my own hands. 
And what that looked like was going back to my old passion of playing the drums. And actually opening up a mini business where I taught young aspiring drummers how to play the drums, how to get good, how to make it on their high school drum line, or even how to make it on their college drum line, because I've done both. There, I had a level of control. I could control the price I charged my customer. I could control how long I wanted the sessions to be. I could control the dynamics of what I did in every session. And for once in my life, I didn't have to answer to anybody. I fell in love with that feeling. So that made me an extra couple hundred dollars a month, nothing too crazy, but it was a start of something that I really liked doing. So from there, I started to learn about other concepts because up until that point, I was trading my time for money, which meant I was making active income. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with active income. I still make active income to this day. But when I learned about the idea of passive income, I had to figure out what that was about. I had to figure out how I was gonna make that a part of my reality. The thing about passive income is it's not all that passive at first. Like you actually have to work really hard up front and a lot of times you don't even know if it's gonna pay off. You don't even know if you're gonna get passive income in the long run or not. Sometimes it doesn't even feel like you'll get paid, period. And I'm not just talking about my YouTube channel. That's just an example of my first real passive income stream that gives me a reliable two to $400 a month. But on top of that, I wanna go big. That's why I'm putting together courses right now and that's why I wanna get into writing books in the future. And here's just another tip that I just thought of. Whenever you're making passive income streams like this, whether it's like videos on YouTube or courses or books, just know that it's really important to assess the market for how much demand there actually is for what you're wanting to put out there. Otherwise, there might be very few people, if any, that actually want what you have to offer, and that can make you feel drained and like you did everything for nothing. And I've personally been there, so I don't want you to go through the same thing. Anyways, I'm not gonna bore you with everything that I'm working on and everything that I wanna work on in the future to build more passive income. I just wanna let you know that's a big part of my strategy. If you wanna learn more about what I'm doing for passive income, you can check out my latest side hustle video. I'll link it up here. And with that, I wanna mention something super important. These are not the only ways to increase your income. These are just the ones that I'm looking at right now. And with that said, you might actually run into other opportunities. So for example, in addition to building my own streams of income, I also got a promotion at work, which I wasn't expecting. That obviously increases my income as well. So in addition to building my own streams of income, I also got a promotion at work, so that obviously increases my income as well. So it doesn't have to just be one specific way. It could be as many different ways as you want to increase your income. And I actually think it's very important to find as many different ways to increase your income as possible. But yeah, that's what's been working for me so far, and I just wanted to share that with you before I got to this very important point. So this is something that kind of coincides with the first thing that I was talking about, which was saving money. But the biggest thing that I think a lot of people leave out when it comes to building wealth and growing your income and all that good stuff is simply keeping your expenses the same no matter how much money you make. That way you can optimize the amount of money that you have. Because there's no sense in making all this money, then turn around and upgrade in everything and all of your expenses. So now you're literally in the same boat you were in before. That's like you only being able to save $100 a month in your past situation and then turn around and making an extra $1,000 a month and then you upgrade all of your expenses which are designed to make you pay an extra $1,000 a month. So you can still only save $100 a month. Back to square one. So I say that to say I've been very mindful of that because I've made that exact mistake at the start of my career. And this was simply because I ended up making more money than I ever thought that I would see at 21 years old. So I kind of went all out, and instead of getting a one-bedroom apartment, which would have been more than enough for me, I went and got a two-bedroom, two-and-a-half bathroom townhouse for just me. That's a lot of space for one guy, and it ended up being a waste of space because I definitely didn't go to every room every day. And I didn't have guests over like that, so really it was just a complete waste. Like sometimes months would go by before I would even go to the other rooms. These are the things to be mindful about. So instead of spending the extra money on living a luxurious lifestyle or, you know, living it up, I've opted to use that extra money to invest. So first of all, it's really easy to miss what I just said, and it's really easy for that to go over someone's head. So I'm just going to break the formula down real quick of how to build wealth and financial freedom. And this was actually taught to me by my millionaire mentors from a few years ago. The formula is to start your foundation by saving your money, getting good with it, and doing it consistently. Then you increase your income while keeping your expenses the same. And with the extra money that you make from your now increased income, you simply invest the difference into good investments. And I'm actually about to break down what good investments are now. I made two super awesome investments. So one was hiring a coach to teach me how to grow on YouTube, how to get monetized, how to build a personal brand, all that good stuff. 
that cost me $1,200. So that one-time purchase of $1,200 has earned me an extra $200 to $400 a month. And some of those months, I went three weeks without even posting on YouTube, and it still made that money. You get what I'm saying? That's a good investment because it's already paid for itself multiple times. So now imagine this. Imagine continuing to get that $200 to $400 a month every month for the rest of your life. And let's say that number never gets above 400, just stays between 200 and 400. That's still a really good investment because not only does it pay for itself time and time again, but it also never stops paying you. So it's a lifetime asset. The second great investment is actually a two in one. So one, it was books, but two, it was also taking the time to learn how to invest in the stock market. Because there's always been this hype around how 4% returns are good and how 8% returns are really good. But when I began to read and learn about this stuff, I found that there was actually ways to get 20% returns, 30%, 40%. Like right now, I have investments in my portfolio that have hit over 20%, 30%, and some over 50%. No lie. And for my Roth IRA, I'm up over 30%. So what I'm saying is once I actually learned how to invest and I learned the different price points of when to get in on certain stocks, basically learning when my favorite stocks were on a discount, that was when I knew I could put more money into it and get way more of a return. And once you begin to invest your time and your money into learning more about these things, that's how you win. And don't get me wrong, I'm definitely not an investing expert, but I'm just someone who's had some success with investing and I just wanted to share some of that stuff with you. I just basically want to give you a few avenues of what's possible to accomplish when you decide to do more than just save your money. And when it comes to stuff like investing, I definitely didn't start doing it overnight. Like what I did was this, and this is what I did, so this is not personal finance advice at all. This is just me telling you how my experience was. I started off investing just here and there, like on the side, like maybe $50 a month in acorns. Like I remember this like it was yesterday. It was just a little bit, but it actually added up over time. Anyway, I didn't really get comfortable with investing until I started increasing my income. And once I did that, I started doing $200, $500, $1,000. And in the background of all of that, I was constantly educating myself, learning different things, learning what works, what doesn't. So that way I could be prepared and armed with the knowledge once I had the money to actually invest like I wanted to. And what I just said there is key. I'm already saving money, but now I'm increasing what I have and now I'm able to invest it. But I'm not just investing blindly. I'm investing with knowledge and I'm applying that knowledge. That formula right there is what is going to make you unstoppable. It doesn't get much better than that. And all I can say is this. I work every day to grow and improve myself and I want to see you do the same. That's why I make these videos for you. And that's why I keep sharing my ideas and what I'm doing. I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I've definitely listened to the right people. I've definitely made the right decisions and I've taken the right advice and I'm passing it on to you. And that's what I always like to do when I know I'm learning something that I know for a fact can change someone's life or improve someone's life. I'm definitely going to share it with you. And the last part of my plan is to actually show people how I did it, how I become financially independent, how I become financially free. And that's part of why I made this video. Because even though I set out an entire plan in this video and I outlined it and everything, I still realize that there is a chance that some part of this plan might fall apart and some things might not work out. And that's cool. I can always adjust what I'm doing and correct it moving forward because I don't give up on my goals. So I understand there might be some setbacks on my journey and I might fall off sometimes, but I never give up. And with whatever lessons that come my way, good or bad, I'm going to definitely share them with you so you can see what's going on in my journey. And once I do achieve my goal, I fully intend on showing everyone exactly how I did it, step by step. And it's not to say that you have to do anything the exact way that I'm doing it or anything like that. It's purely to share my story, show you how I reached a certain level of success and how you can too. And I can show you a very vivid picture of what it looked like to go through the journey, what obstacles I had to face, what I do when things got extremely difficult and tough, how I dealt with burnout, how I dealt with self-doubt and all that stuff. Imposter syndrome, you name it. Whatever comes my way, I'm going to definitely be transparent about it. And most of all, through that story, I hope to motivate you to take action to change your life. Because at the end of the day, I just want to see you win. And I want to show people how to build a digital empire from scratch and then grow that digital empire beyond measure. That way you'll have one less thing to worry about, money because it'll be so abundant you won't know what to do with it. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.